Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Today we hear the Beatitudes from Jesus from Luke's Gospel. In Matthew, they come from the Sermon on the Mount. And in Luke, they are called the Sermon on the Plain. I'm going to read just a few preceding verses as an introduction. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear Jesus and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch Jesus, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not hold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In addition to the end, finally, of the political campaign, what else are you hoping for? Hopefully it is hope that gets you up out of bed every single morning. You get up with a sense of hope, looking for perhaps some surprise or new adventure a new opportunity, or maybe you get up hopeful that your life will just be calm and stable for a period of time. Hope is essential, of course, for our lives. When we are kids with hope, we look forward to perhaps going fishing with dad or an uncle, or we look forward and hope to go to a ball game or a, a concert with, with grandma. With hope, you get up Maybe you're going to start a, a new job or you're going to head out on vacation. We all have these hopes that call us forward into God's new future. And we know, too, that our Lord God is a God of hope. God is hopeful. And today we hear of some of the hopes that God has for us in what is called the Sermon on the Plain from the Gospel of Luke. The Lord God hopes that our lives will be better tomorrow than they are even today. And so the folks who heard Jesus for that first time, they rose up early in the morning with a sense of hope. Now their lives at that time were very precarious. They lived from hand to mouth one day to the next. They were very vulnerable. And yet they came because Jesus for them embodied a new possible hope. They came out to that broad plain to hear the words of Jesus. They came with their diseases. 
They came out with their hungry children. And their hungry children remind us of the some 60 million displaced people in the world today. People who don't have a place to call home. And these people who, so many of them live in refugee camps. And their hope is, is that perhaps a, a Lutheran world relief truck will show up in the morning. And bring bags of rice and beans or oatmeal so that their children might eat, have breakfast, and then live to see one more day. So the first hearers of Jesus, they were looking forward and they were living forward into the next new day. It was their hope that tomorrow's promise would become today's reality. It is hope that leads us forward then. It was hope that caused our ancestors to build this country. It was the gift of hope that fueled the saints who have gone before us so that they might live in faith, trusting in God one day to the next. It was hope that sustained those ancient cub fans for 108 years. We all live with a sense of hope. So Jesus had spent the night in prayer up on a mountain. He came down to the plain, that broad expanse with his disciples. There was a huge crowd behind his disciples. And Jesus began to speak and to announce God's hope. For all of those people, Jesus spoke God's hope promise for you and for me in this time and place. Jesus said, blessed are the poor. Yours is the kingdom of God. And blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. And blessed are you who weep, for the day will come when you will laugh once again. And blessed are you when people hate you and leave you out and exclude you. Blessed are you when you are reviled because of my namesake, because you trust and believe and follow in me. Blessed are you. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Now we wonder, when exactly will Jesus' words and this promise of God's future come true for us? Well, God's promised future will happen for us whenever hearts and minds are changed. When the poor, in fact, do have good jobs that they rise up early and faithfully go to. That's God's hope. It's God's hope that parents will see that all children receive a good education and those parents work alongside their kids so that that education might lead to a better life. That's God's hope. It's God's hope that there will be affordable medical care for all people regardless of circumstance in life. It's God's hope that there be neither poor nor rich, but that all live for the common good. That's God's promised future. That's God's hope for us. When we pray for our enemies, when we follow in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus, when our deeds match our hearts, that is God's hope for us. When God orders our steps and we follow in Jesus' path, that's God's hope. Jesus goes on to describe this life that we have in Christ Jesus. He said, when, when God rules and governs the hearts of people who live in the land, then yes, we will work hard to somehow try to love our enemies and those who oppose us, we will pray for them, as hard and challenging as that may be. And in God's kingdom, well, violence and retaliation and judgment and scarcity, hoarding and self-preservation, none of these work in God's kingdom. And finally, they finally run out of steam and they are of no avail in God's kingdom. They just don't work in God's future. And when we try to 
bring forth our successes and our achievements and display them before others and all that we might have in possessions. These don't receive notice in God's future. Well, in some sense they do because Jesus says, Woe! 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 And these woes are, well, they're a heads up and they're a warning that all of our successes and all the wealth that we might have, they're all intended to serve God's purposes and the common good. Looking forward, living forward in God's hope, we, the rich ones, then grow in generosity. And we, who may at times become self-absorbed, we start to look forward and live forward beyond our own small world and see that God's world is a much larger place filled with a great deal of diversity. And in those occasions when we may be quick to judge or criticize, then God stops us and, and we realize that we need to be problem solvers with a can-do attitude, again, for the common good. I think we all realize, and it's true, that it's so very challenging to live out the words that Jesus gives to us today. But then we remember, too, that God's word says that with God all things are what? All things are possible. Last Wednesday night, gives evidence to that reality. So this morning then we give thanks for all of those saints who have gone before us, who have died in Christ. You see, at one time, all of us were their hope. They lived for us. We are so thankful that so many of those saints passed on their faith in Jesus on to us that we too might live and gather in faith today. We were their hope. We give thanks for the sacrifices they made on our behalf. And today we give thanks too for the newly baptized among us. And now these little baptized ones, they are our hope. And it is God's hope that the newly baptized will be raised and live among us as we live and grow and struggle and ask the tough questions together as God's children, as saints in the Lord. Might all of us experience the fruits of the Holy Spirit into which we were baptized. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. How much the world needs the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit in our time. Yes, it's true, we live with a sense of hope, and many of the hopes we have are very, very small. What gets you out of bed in the morning may simply be the aroma of Grandma's cinnamon rolls calling you to the breakfast table and a cold glass of milk. When I was a kid, I had the hope of having a horse. It was a wonderful hope, but it ended up being just a, a mop stick. <laughs> now, some of the kids had those little plastic horse heads on the end of their sticks, but, but mine was headless. But even that hope moved me forward in one way or another. Friends in Christ, beloved in the Lord, saints of God, it is God's huge hope that sustains our lives to this day. It is God's big hope that calls us to look forward and to live forward into God's tomorrow. It is the hope of God that changes our minds and changes our spirits. It's God's hope that calls us to live into God's peace, into God's kindness and into God's justice. It is God's hope that leads us into the kingdom of Jesus. And of course, we all know that Jesus is the first and best hope for planet Earth. The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and minds firm in the faith of Jesus.